Do you think we will see these satellites with the 700 amp setup for CCS2 at places that where I would charge, for example? And this is where the magic happens. A thousand amps through the MCS uh, cable that we have here. And how's the temperature? <laughs> Thank you to Kempower for sponsoring this out of spec reviews video. If you could choose, would you rather have 700 amps on CCS2 or would you have 1000 amps on MCS? These are the new Kempower satellites. This is brand new Kempower hardware and we are here at the brand new truck charging site. And today we are going to do a full tour of the site. We are going to do some interviews and we are going to check this out. I am super excited to see the high amperage CCS2 stuff and also MCS. And there are rumors that we have the first customer delivered electric truck with MCS in Europe right over here. So let's do a full tour of this brand new site. So let's do some cable impressions. First off, the CCS2. Always great cable management with Camp Power. You can just go and place this wherever you want to place it. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how you park. So if you're bad at parking, it doesn't really matter. You can just have the cable exactly where you want it, which is awesome to see. What is insane is this cable is rated for 1,500 amps. Yes, you heard right. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's try this one. So first of all, it's a little bit you have to get it out of the holster because it's so enormous. But even this cable is quite light and I like the cable management. This is so thick, <laughs> it needs to hold the entire connector up. What I notice is that this cable is way shorter and that's of course due to the high amperage rating of the cable. Uh, but uh, most electric trucks actually have a standardized uh, position of the charge port where the driver is. So you just pull in here and you can charge. So it doesn't matter in that much for electric trucks in terms of uh, cable management or the length of the cable. But it's nice that it's super easy and I could probably plug in the MCS connector with one hand, which is quite impressive, I would say. And something I want to talk about with MCS as well is that MCS is standardized in the US, Asia and Europe with the same standard, which is the first time ever this has happened. And this is of course because we don't want all the different plugs that we have uh, on the personal car side with, uh, with uh, CCS2, CCS1, NACS and Shademo and GBT in China. For MCS, it's actually globally standard, which is interesting. This is where the power comes from. 600 kilowatts, 600 kilowatt, 1.2 megawatts of power available. So these are just the power cabinets and this is where the magic happens. Then the power is delivered from the cabinets out to the satellites and we get power out to the cars in the MCS connector or the CCS2 connector, depending on what the configuration is. So if a truck comes in with the megawatt charging port and wants everything, he of course will get everything that he needs. But if someone else plugs in, the power will be distributed to the cars. First of all, your name and role at Kempower. My name is uh, Tai Ekberg. I'm uh, working as a senior sales manager in uh, Norway. And uh, this is the first uh, MCS place we have in charging site we have in Norway. And it's the first uh, we also have with uh, high power CCS2 with 700 kilowatts, uh, 700 amps. Yeah, that's super, super impressive. And that's the first thing I noticed because I have a CCS2 car and I'm testing a bunch of CCS2 cars that crave more than 500 amps. So yeah. this is super, super cool to see. And the MCS is also insanely cool. I've never seen the connector before. So this was super uh, cool for me uh, to see. And these, are they these still called satellites? Because they look very different from what everybody knows as Camp Power. Yeah, it's still called satellites, yep. but because of the coolings needed and also the cables coming in, uh, we need more space inside it for connecting everything. And are these sold side by side with the existing Camp Power um, satellites? So people that build charging site can choose which ones uh, yes. they want? They can actually choose uh, as. Um, MCS charger and also have a normal satellite going up to 
300 kilowatt or something like that. Okay, so, so you can uh, you can mix and match. Mix and match, and, and um, you can build it together as you want. And all uh, all earlier built t- uh, uh, chargers from Campower can also be upgraded. So that's a feature that is quite good for our customer that has followed us for many years now. Yeah, that's super cool. And I remember early on, Campower always advertised that they had the power cam net and you can choose the amount of modules yep. that you wanted. And you can always upgrade the site as we move along. So that's the same case here then. Especially important in the truck business when you want to have a quick charge during the day and you will have many satellites during the night for spreading the power to many cars. Exactly, so exactly. And you have two 600 kilowatt uh, cabinets here. We can walk over yep. to them and take a look at them maybe. And um, and uh, so that's 1.2 megawatts available. Yeah. Yeah. Combined together and they are working in parallel. Yeah. But uh, we are collecting power from each cabinet and out to each satellite then. Oh. So yeah. It's a normal setup for it. And we can actually move every 25 kilowatt to which place we want to. Uh, or to who is demanding. So, so still maintaining that 25 kilowatt granularity that yeah, Power yeah. is known for. That's super, super uh, cool and very, very impressive. So we normally have that as a, a mark on what we are delivered always. And uh, in, in this case, we have two, two sides where you can drive. So the first place is the, where you hit when driving that way is uh, hitting a MCS. And you can choose, choose between MCS or CCS2 but the car behind will always have the CCS. And the same on the other side, but that the other direction. What do you think the demand is for CCS2 for truck ch- uh, charging versus MCS moving forward now? I think you will need uh, CCS, uh, MCS charging on, uh, on where you normally fill your diesel. Okay, yeah. So that's the main, uh, on the route, on the highways. But on the depots, you will still see much more CCS. Of charging. course, for lower um, uh, lower power. Yeah, yeah. And we see that the, the the where you charge at the depot is more and more at the gate, where you park your car. You are putting in new stuff that is going out to the stores, and that's where you're charging. That's where the uh, truck is standing still. So that's the most uh, efficient way to charge it. Do you think we will see these satellites with the 700 amp setup for CCS2 at like? places that where I would charge, for example? Uh, in combination, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you can put up uh, this one in combination with the liquid cool satellites as well. So you can choose between those. But I think that maybe there are going to be a, a price difference if you're going high up in power. And if you still don't want to have more than uh, 200 kilowatt, you get a discount maybe. Do you think charge point operators will charge you differently depending on the power level? So that if you charge faster, you will pay more? Some charge point operators in Norway already do this between 50 kW chargers and 200 kW chargers, for example. The price is often different. There is no need to have 700 amp chargers everywhere today when there are like three cars on our market that could maybe benefit from something more than 500 amps. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And uh, as I'm, I'm self driving a car that is uh, limited 200 kW. Yeah. But of course, uh, I, I will choose a charger that is uh, it's more suited for me and give my, my best charging speed. Thank That's you so track. much. <laughs> Very nice. This is an actual long haul battery electric truck, so that's why it has MCS to get to where it's going fast. The battery is 624 kilowatt hours, gross capacity, and 518 usable. The end. Open. Yay! It took one to two minutes to ramp up properly, but when it went for it, it absolutely sent the juice. A thousand amps and then the pack voltage kept creeping up, so we reached over 700 kilowatts. From my experience, there was zero noise from the cabinets and zero noise from the dispensers as well. CCS2 charging here at this uh, new camp power satellite, and we are getting 338 kilowatts. That's nice. Right, but at the same time, from the same cabinets, we are charging over here at an insane 697 kilowatts, a thousand amps through the MCS uh, cable that we have here. And how's the temperature? It's super cool. It's super, super cool.
Let's take a look at the charging curve of the MCS track, the Scania 40R. And here we can see the charging curve up to 600, 700 kilowatts and tapering down. And even at like 99%, it's doing 374 kilowatts. That suggests an enormous top buffer, of course, uh, but that makes sense. So let's see here. In 33 minutes, it went from 33 to 100% in 33 minutes. That's absolutely insane. And it went from, let's see, this is even more impressive. So in 30 minutes, it went from 33 to 98% on the MCS charger. Absolutely insane. 327 kilowatt hours added in around 30 minutes. That's 4.5 mol Y batteries. And the average charging speed of 650 kilowatts. This is an exact mirror of the site on the other side where we saw all the trucks charging, just for your information. So, here we have the new satellites and we got confirmed that these are still called satellites. And here we have MCS first. The MCS plug is enormous, but you have this kind of cable management that you can see here with this very, very hefty cable to hold it up. And it's also angled which is interesting. So still the same kind of cable management that we are, uh, that the Camp Power is known for. It looks a little bit different between the cables here, of course, and here is the CC, uh, CCS2 cable. So first of all, this one is rated for a thousand volts uh, and uh, let's see, no, 1500 volts, 1500 amps. And here we have the CCS2 cable and this one is rated for 500 amps continuous. And also, let's see, Eight, up to 800 amps boost and Camp Power actually advertises 700 amps. These are Huber uh, Sunder cables. These are actually pretty rare in Europe. Usually these are only, I've only ever seen this on some chargers in uh, Norway uh, on Ionity stations, I think. And then uh, in the US, they are very popular. So that's some beefy CCS2 cables. And I can't wait to see these units out in the field so that we can charge our Xpeng G9 and our Seeker 7X and all the other fast charging cars on proper uh, cables because it's so difficult to find cables that will go above 500 amps uh, around here in Europe. So that's something I am super, super, super excited about. I'm also excited about the modularity of the entire system here and super impressed by it. Let's start with the beginning of Camp Power with these cabinets. You could choose the amount of power modules that you wanted. They are in 50 kilowatt increments and then the granularity is 25 kilowatts, which means that it can share power down to um, 25 kilowatts. So a car charging at 125 kilowatts will take up five power modules, not uh, like six or more uh, with other type of charging solutions. So this is super, super nice. You only uh, take up the power that you need for the car with the granularity. But uh, again, the modularity I was super impressed with. These power modules that go into here, you can choose how many you want and you can upgrade later. And they also said that as long as you kind of have the newer uh, cabinet, you can upgrade the satellites to these ones, these satellites. And why do they look like this? Why are they so enormous? Well, it's for serviceability. Serviceability is extremely important for uh, chargers, for uh, personal cars. I believe it's critical infrastructure, but I, it's even more important for trucks. Like they said uh, over there uh, just a few minutes ago, they talked about how you, if your car breaks down, you can call a taxi. If your truck breaks down, <laughs> you can't do anything. There is no taxi truck coming to save you. So reliability is extremely important. And Chem Powers uh, has always been all about reliability, all about cold weather performance. And uh, honestly, uh, Chem Power has been super, super reliable in, uh, in my uh, use. I've used a ton of Chem Power chargers uh, during all these years. So you have the modularity there. You have the modularity. You can choose to mix and match these ones with, with the traditional satellites. And the traditional satellites are, of course, amazing for charging most cars that are on the road today. And then they can just put in uh, this one, the super, super insane 700 amp CCS2 uh, satellite. 
at the site. So you can be 100% sure that an ID4 owner will take up this one instead of the other satellites when you come with your Seeker 7X. Uh, I'm just joking, of course, but uh, you know, labeling of the chargers is super important as well. What we have to know is that kilowatts are difficult. How are you supposed to rate your charger? For 400 volt cars, for 800 volt cars, for super high voltage 800 volt cars? Doesn't make sense to write this one as a 700 kilowatt charger. There are no cars charging at 1000 volts. So they are chosen 560 kilowatts. So they have assumed that your car is 800 volt um, when you plug in at 700 amps and then you can get 560 kilowatts. I don't think this, this is a good number to write on the charger. I think it's, uh, it's a good mix. Some chargers actually write like 500, 600 and um, even more kilowatts, even though the cables are not capable of delivering the amps that any normal car would need to actually achieve those uh, uh, charging speeds. So I think labeling these as 560 and these ones at <laughs> 1,200 kilowatts, 1.2 megawatts, makes sense. Thank you so much for watching this Autospec reviews video. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I gave you a good impression of what's happening around in Norway and Europe. In Norway, electric trucks are normal. This is Asko's site. Asko is a big grocery like um, distributor in Norway. So all our food comes out of this building and uh, they have electrified their entire, like their own fleet. So. The fleet that they have at this location is almost entirely battery electric now. And it happens everywhere. There, it's an absolute no-brainer to go with a battery electric truck, especially in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and of course in the rest of the world as uh, the rest of uh, the world moves on. It's an absolute no-brainer due to cost, due to just everything that has to do with the comfort and so many reasons to go fully battery electric on the trucks. Here they can come in, they can charge for their resting period and then they can go on their way. There is zero downtime. People think that there is a downtime with electric trucks. There is no downtime because they can just charge when they have their legally mandated resting period. So it doesn't matter if the car is like diesel or battery electric in terms of efficiency for the driver to do all the deliveries during the day. So anyways, that was my tour of this brand new truck charging site in Norway. And I will talk to you very, very soon again.